At Lou Merloni on Twitter is upset he cannot make a bet today, and we can. Lou, good afternoon, Jeez. friend. How are you, buddy? You guys are just rubbing it in. I got buddies texting. I can't wait. Wild, wild west at 10 a.m. I'm oh, ready yeah. to go, and I'm down in Florida for two weeks. <laughs> hey, would you like me? Hey, you want me to make a bet for you? <laughs> I, I, listen, yeah. hey, oh, I'm my pretty, God, Lou. Hey, Lou, I'm pretty good at this now. I can, <laughs> oh. I'm not listen. kidding. Wait, Lou, I can make a bet for you right now. I'm not Jones in that bad. It's just the, the moment that you know that it's all i don't have it i gotta wait a few weeks but that's okay wait when I'm are you even there. coming back i don't know i'm down at like the 23rd oh okay all right well there you go well yeah, I'll, I'll lou okay. i don't know if i don't know if you know what is going on with christian but he I'm hit a lot like, of things he <laughs> hit like two of ten picks on on the show and Five now and now he is mr gambling they call me yeah, gg I, I know he's been. He was on fire when I was there. It was like four straight. I think yep. he blew the streak that yep. one day. But yep. and now he's on an zero for three heater <laughs> and is still trying to pump himself up. Would, <laughs> wait, would you bet if you were going to take? I think the what is it? The over under for Red Sox right now is like seventy eight and a half. Seventy eight and a half. Yeah. Is it yeah. what yeah. it is? Would you? What would you go with that? Just if somebody asked you, like if since you're uh, you know really good at your job, let's say I was going to place a bet on that particular bet, <laughs> what would you tell I me would, to do? I would go over on that all day. Ooh, perfect. I felt last year they won 78 games. They have less games against the AL East. I felt like there was just a disappointment up and down a lineup. The rotation was a mess. Like, yeah, seven and, and, and all of that, again, and playing these teams less. Toronto, New York, Tampa, 78, over 78. Okay. You know, Lou, I, uh, I got asked that question on BetQL this morning, the whole Red Sox over-under. And my initial response was they can blow by that number as long as the pitching stays relatively healthy. Yeah. And I think they're loaded in the bullpen, Lou, to where they can deal with an injury. Is it really about the rotation and finding a way to have all of these guys hit between 25 and 30 starts? Is that just a pipe dream given the way this roster has been constructed from the starting pitching standpoint? Yeah, I mean, you like to have somebody step up and give you 30-32, and then you know, then you could look at it and say, well, we got six or seven guys that if everybody gave me 20, you okay. know, and, and it's about like where the injuries happen. So I always talk about like staggering injuries. Last year, you can't have what happened. You know, four guys go down in the month of July, and you go to the AAA, and the guys aren't ready. This year, you've already got a couple of guys that are delayed, but you can handle that, you know, for the first few weeks, one time, two times through the order with the guys like Crawford, guys like Hauk. You know, you want Hauk in the pen. You want Crawford in the pen. But it's not, you know, we're just talking about guys that are delayed and there's no real, like, arm issues, like what's going on in Tampa where I was just yesterday with the Yankees. They got some issues with arms, elbows. That's different. So, okay, so speaking of arms and elbows and knees and toes and everything that goes along with that, I saw that Trevor Story was taking ground balls yesterday. Um, I mean, is that is that just okay? Don't get too excited. He still won't be back till September. Or have you witnessed anything special with his rehab? Yeah, I, I don't know about September. I mean, I, listen, I don't know if people right now are trying to just be like, hey, if you get him back, it's positive. But you know, realistically, July, you know, if everything goes well and there's no setbacks, I think this right here is to keep the man sane. You know, like I, I'm hurt. I had surgery. I'm down here. Like, can I do something? What can I do? Let me take ground balls. I won't. I can't throw. So I think it's just more of him wanting to get on the field and just kind of wanting to push himself so when the arm is ready, he feels pretty good in the field just to kind of get some action. But he's still a long way away. Our friend Lou Maloney is with Gresh and Fourier here on Boston and New England Sports Original, WEEI. How is Justin Turner doing, Lou, and what do you make of that whole situation? The guy's walking around with stitches. Yeah, he's lucky, too. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was awful. Um, he's got, what, 16 stitches, like, inside of his mouth, some outside mm. of his mouth. He can't – they won't let him on the field until he gets his stitches out. And from what I understand, he's still, you know, a week away or so of that. Um, and then, you you know, then we'll see what what it looks like. You know, luckily for him, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe they're still doing concussion protocol just to kind of keep an eye on him in the next few weeks to make sure, you know, he doesn't have a concussion. But hitters are different than pitchers. Like, usually with two weeks to go in spring training, hitters are like, I'm done. Like, I'm ready. I've had my 25, 30 at-bats. I'm ready to go. It's all for the pitchers at that point. So if this guy can get back 
in 10 days and only have a week or so or 10 days or so before camp uh, you know, ends, he can still get the at-bats he needs to be ready for opening day. But he's another guy that if he's not ready for opening day, it's only because he's going to be delayed a week because of this incident. Yeah, but Lou, just you know, bring us into the mind of a, of a guy that was hit by a pitch, yeah. okay? Because I know that's happened to you before. How apprehensive are you? Your first at bat, like how? Wouldn't you? Don't you think it would probably take a little bit longer to give a, get a little bit comfortable with it? Yeah, his first at bat won't be in a big league game. It'll be in the backfield, and you kind of like what I did. It's like the you know, after you do the the soft toss and the tee work, you pick you, you find a lefty, right? You, you don't want to face that righty right away. You face the lefty that's control guy, you know that you know is not going to be some guy blowing ninety eight. That is no clue where it's going. You want to be able to sit in the box and feel good that this guy knows where the pitch is going. You know, and then you you know you feel comfortable get a few at bats. Then you face the righty, and the guy that, the righty that you face is probably a guy like Kluber. You know what I mean? Guy that's going to be around the plate. He's going to throw strikes because it's all about their mindset. You know, and and worried about getting hit. And I think in time you start to feel comfortable with that, and then you get some games here and get some big league pitchers late in camp. But initially, it's going to probably start in the backfield. Uh, Lou, I saw that uh, Tapia and Dahlbeck are uh, apparently in the lineup today. Where do we I, look? I, I've, I'm, I'm assuming Dahlbeck is is on the roster. Where are we with Tapia given the uh, outfield situation? Yeah, I actually think Tapia is going to be on this roster. You know, as like that fifth outfielder, left-handed bat. Ref Schneider is here. He's the fourth guy. But Tapia gives you, you know, I think left swing power. He's here last year in Toronto again with this team and, and gave you, you know, pretty good year in that role. There's some athleticism. There's some pop. Uh, Dahlbeck, to me, is a wait and see on Justin Turner. I don't see him making this roster Woo. unless Turner can't. You know, I could see him going down to AAA, um, being a corner infielder, DH, getting himself ready and, and if he is needed because I think Turner kind of takes that role from him. Right-handed bat, can play first, can play third. Hey, were you able to watch any of uh, Yoshida in the World Baseball Classic? I, I watched a little bit of it this morning, and then I just saw the highlight of Yu Chang's like tying home run. It looked like, like Game 7 of the World Series. Like It was electric. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've seen it or not, but check it out. It's it's out of control. But, yeah, I watched Yoshida. Three for three, right? Five RBIs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, does it correlate, though? Or is it like he should be doing that, right? That's kind of what my, my angle is. Is like, well, you shouldn't be surprised. You know, that's what he should be doing in, in, in a situation like this. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the competition. Again, you always look at who they're doing it off of. You know, that's really what matters to me. Um, even, like, in big league camp. We always overhype numbers at the end, talking about this kid and that kid. Well, if he's coming in the sixth inning, the sixth to the ninth inning, and he's at, and he's a double-A, triple-A kid, and he's facing double-A and triple-A pitchers, then he should have some success. You know, is he doing it off big league arms? So Yoshida, is he over there, him and Otani, are they just abusing guys that you know would never see the big leagues right now? Probably. But you'll see in the next round when they get the Dominican and they get the U.S., uh, you know, and, and those types of teams, Puerto Rico, you'll – you see some big league arms coming out of then. Lou, who is off to a good start in camp that you hope can continue it? And who has not been great here during camp that sort of needs to pick it up a little bit, in your opinion? Well, I would say Casas has been outstanding. You know, um, as advertised, control at bats, very good defensively, a lot of pop. Like, he just – he already looks like he's locked in, seeing the ball real well. Um, so he's one of those guys. I thought Verdugo looked fantastic before he left as well, as did Jaron Duran. Just looking like a different hitter, like it, just able to give himself a chance in the box rather than all these moving weird parts. He just looks very simple right now. The guy that's struggling is Adam Duvall, but it's it's March 9th, 10th, whatever it is. It's 10, 11 at bat. So um, I don't know if he's got a hit, you know, maybe popping up, swinging, swinging and missing. But it's so early in camp with a veteran like that. Uh, you worry more about it. Actually, you don't even worry about it until the season starts. <laughs> you know, with veterans. But uh, you'll start thinking about him a little bit more in a couple of weeks if he's not swinging it well. Yeah, so, Lou, the other thing is I was going to ask you is I saw this, you know, article in, uh, by uh, Dan Shaughnessy. I saw you comment on it, and it had to do with, like, you know, having being hopeful and realistic at, at the same time when it comes to this Red Sox team. Where do you land um, on those two ideas, okay? You mean hopeful and, you know, and, and positive and then being realistic? Yeah, I, I thought that article was kind of funny. It just, you know, all of a sudden, Dan has spun this to where he's asking the question if it's okay to doubt this team. And really the question all year is, like, is it okay to think they might be okay? 
You know, like he, he the whole discussion is the team is going to suck and that they're going to finish in last place. And somehow Dan has taken it from, you know, because Jared Carabas is positive and a couple other people on Twitter, now he feels like the consensus is that everybody is in love with this team and thinks they're going to play great, which I don't – he's amazing. He can spin it. I mean, he's great at what he does. I don't know how the hell he got to that point. Um, but he did. You know, for me, it's – it's I don't know, like I said – you see a lot of these guys, and they're healthy right now. And you say, okay, the lineup can hit. You know, this rotation, there is some potential here. The bullpen is better. And if you gave that team last year with a better bullpen, a good bullpen, you'd probably tack on another 7, 8, 9, 10 wins. How many games did they blow? So can they stay in this thing? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you know, the right guys stay healthy, then they should be competing for a playoff spot in September. All right. So I know you can't gamble in Florida. Correct. But what will be the game time temperature today? Uh, you can set the over under at eighty three and a half. Oh my god! It's every you, day. Are, are you like a bronze god now? Have you been out sunning? No, oh, it's it's every day. It's beautiful. Yesterday was Tampa, so I had like a two and a half three hour ride home. That sucked. But today, today Lou will be by the pool, maybe with the corona. I don't know. Dreaming of someday being allowed to bet on his phone while I do it. Who was uh, – what was the car ride? You weren't by yourself, were you? I, I actually went solo because it was day one. It was communication. Will was down with the family. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to – I'll just take off. I just was chilling. It was nice. Have you seen what Greg bet? Hill down there yet? I have not. I think I'm going to um, – luckily for me, I'll be able to hey, see Hey, you can probably tonight. get a free meal tonight. You just yeah, find luckily, Greg, get a free meal. Yeah, I think I'll be around him tonight. There's a little dinner that I'm, I'm, I'm attending, I believe. Ah, so, there you go. Oh, I'll see you a, oh, the heavy hitters get to go down That's there. That's right. And got to speak to all the sponsors. They leave us here in the cold. I see hey, how it is. Yep. I'm already here. He's the one that's getting the jets, the private jets down there. You should be having some issues with him. But, you know, he's got a little more pull over there than you two. Well, oh, they, listen, <laughs> then, yeah, there's no, there's no question about that. We're pulling we something else. Um, will, will you be, uh, will you be uh, hijacking some beverages from that event to be able to bring back to uh, Chez Marloni down there no, in Florida? Like, I can't be, like, sticking beers in my pocket. Why not? Save a couple bucks at the hotel. Hotel's got a bar, too, you know. Oh, there you go. Well, those yeah. things are expensive, though. Yeah, I know. But that's right. The way <laughs> EI pays me, are you kidding me? You can afford anything. <laughs> Expense. Hey, expensive, I was going to say. Boy, Lou, you yeah, all this of, stuff. Yeah, a lot of Diet Cokes down there, Lou. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. Have a great call today. Have fun. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Later, talk to you later. There goes Lou's. our guy, Lou Merloni, who is upset that he can't make a bet in the state I of can, Florida. Though.